Dartmouth opens the season against New Hampshire, who later proved to be one of the top teams in the Yankee Conference with victories over such strong Eastern teams as Connecticut and Delaware. New Hampshire kicks off to start the game, and sophomore Greg Cook takes the kick for Dartmouth on the five-yard line, speeding 33 yards up the sideline behind some fine blocking. On Dartmouth's first play from scrimmage, center Ken DeHaven and left guard Henry Gerfin open a big hole. Right half Al Rizicki slices upfield for 14 yards. The freshman class numerals form a background as quarterback Jack Kinderdine pitches out to Greg Cook who sweeps right end for another nine yards. Dartmouth is set back on a penalty, but Jack Kinderdine comes back to toss a pass to left end Carl Funky, good for 18 yards. Operating from a double wing tee on fourth down, Kinderdine pitches out to Al Rizicki, who starts wide around left, and then passes to Connie Purcells. Purcells steps on the end line just as he catches the ball, so Dartmouth's long march downfield fails to produce a score. The Big Green second team starts the second quarter and sophomore quarterback Bill King rolls out and throws complete to Dave Evans for 11 yards. Later on in the period, Dartmouth's first team returns to the game and Jack Kinderdine pitches out to Al Rizicki who fights his way for 13 yards. Quarterback Jack Kinderdine did a great job of punting all season. This one travels 63 yards. Tackle Jim McElhaney, right end John Henry are down under it to drop the New Hampshire safety man on the two yard line. When Dartmouth next has the ball, they move down to the 19 yard line. Jack Kinderdine drops back, faking a pass to the left and then tosses a screen pass to Al Rizicki, who rambles down the right sideline for the first touchdown of the season. The Big Green makes the two-point conversion good, but was offside on the play. On the second attempt, this time from the seven-yard line, quarterback Kinderdine decides it's better to go for the single point, and Gerfin splits the uprights for the extra score that eventually proves to be the margin of victory. A single mistake on pass defense in the third quarter gives the UNH team new life as Dixon throws to the left end, Eustace, for a touchdown. On the following kickoff, Al Rizicki takes the ball on the 10-yard line, starts to his left and reverses to Tom King, who almost breaks away, getting out to the 45-yard line before being tripped up. During the remainder of the game, the Indian defense refuses to budge an inch. On this wide sweep, Gerfin and Maroney combine to stop the New Hampshire ball carrier at the line. As the third quarter ends, Kinderdine receives fine protection before firing to Connie Purcells for 15 yards. In the fourth period, Kinderdine fakes to Rizicki and again throws to Purcells for another Dartmouth first down. On the next play, Rizicki takes a pitch out and follows his blockers all the way to the five-yard line. However, the Indians are set back on a penalty and fail to score. During the closing minutes, New Hampshire is kept deep in their own territory as the big green line swarms over their quarterback before he has an opportunity to throw. Dartmouth starts the Ivy season against the powerful Pennsylvania Quakers who were one of the preseason favorites for the Ivy title. On the first play of the game, Kinderdine fakes to fullback Dick Maroney and then slips the ball to halfback Al Rizicki who hits off tackle for eight yards behind the blocking of Purcells, the Haven, and Mooney. Kinderdine tosses a flare pass to Rizicki. Right end John Henry flattens the Penn linebacker as Rizicki turns upfield for 17 yards behind a wave of four Dartmouth blockers. 
Dartmouth's constantly shifting defense confuses the Quakers, and early in the first quarter, a wild pass from center goes into the end zone. Maroney, Henry, and McElhaney spill the pen fullback for a safety. When Dartmouth has the ball next, left halfback Tom King surprises the Quakers with a quick kick good for 50 yards. Few plays later, Porter Shreve of Penn punts back to Dartmouth and Al Riziki almost breaks away as he brings the ball back 31 yards before being caught from behind. On two plays, Dartmouth grinds out nine and a half yards. On third down, with inches to go, everyone expects a buck into the line. Kinderdine fakes first to Riziki and then to Tom King, then hides the ball on his hip before dropping back to throw to Connie Purcells, who's all alone behind the Penn secondary. Left guard Henry Gerpen boots the ball squarely through the uprights to put Dartmouth out in front, 9-0. A few plays later, Dartmouth's outstanding senior end, Connie Purcells, does a fine job of forcing the Penn ball carrier to the sideline, but unfortunately injured his knee in the play and is lost to the Dartmouth team for the remainder of the season. Shortly before the half, the big green offense again begins to move. Jack Kinderdine throws strikes on three successive plays, the first being to left end Mike Nyquist. Kinderdine then picks out right end Dave Usher on the hook pass. Next, the Dartmouth quarterback, after faking a draw and a pass to the left, throws a screen pass to Al Riziki, good for 16 yards. But the threat is ended as the half closes. In the entire game, Penn gains a total of only 20 yards on the ground, and their vaunted passing attack is broken up by the big green line and alert pass defense, as shown by Dick Maroney on this play. On the following play, the Dartmouth line again swarms over the Penn passer, and the ball is batted down before he can get it away. In the first play of the final quarter, Kinderdine rides the ball to fullback Maroney, then keeps it himself and races around right end for 12 yards. Dartmouth quarterback then fires a pass to Dave Usher for another Indian first down. After the ball is faked to Maroney, Kinderdine hands off to Riziki. Al Swivel hips his way past three tacklers before finally being tackled. Little Al Riziki again shows his great determination as he bowls his way into the end zone for another Dartmouth touchdown. Continuing to shine on defense, Captain DeHaven drops back to intercept Koval's pass, ending Penn's only threat. Al Riziki then drives over left tackle for a first down behind the blocking of Funky McElhaney and Tom King. The Dartmouth team that was rated a three-touchdown underdog chalks up a great 15-0 victory. Dartmouth's constantly jitterbugging defenses confuse the Brown blocking assignments. On Brown's first play, and Dave Usher drives through to spill the ball carrier for a four-yard loss. After Brown was forced to punt, fullback Dick Maroney blasts through the center of the Brown line as right tackle Andy Ziglas takes out the Brown linebacker. Al Riziki throws a key block, and Maroney rambles for 61 yards before finally being brought down. On the next play, Gerfen, DeHaven, and Chapman open a gaping hole in the center of the Brown line, and Riziki drives for a first down on the nine-yard line. Two downs later, the big green line drives the Brown defenders back as quarterback Kinderdine sneaks over for Dartmouth's first touchdown before the game is five minutes old. 80 yards in five plays. 
When Dartmouth has the ball next, the big green team again grinds up the yardage. On this play, Maroney drives for 13 yards for a first down on the nine yard line. A few plays later, Al Rizicki smashes off left tackle for another touchdown, and Dartmouth takes a 12 0 lead. In the second quarter, the Dartmouth defense continues to be strong as safety man Dick Beatty intercepts one of Rohrbach's passes and returns it for 20 yards. Late in the quarter, Dartmouth threatens again as Kinderdine rolls out to the right and throws a long cross field pass to Dick Maroney. Maroney slips and goes down as he tries to dodge the last Brown defender. The first time Dartmouth has the ball in the third quarter, right guard Chuck Chapman does a fine job of trapping as Rizicki pops through the middle for 15 yards. Operating from a double wing T formation, left half Greg Cook starts in motion. Kinderdine fakes to Cook but pivots and hands off on reverse to Rizicki, who hits back to the left for the first down. Again, Cook starts in motion, but this time Kinderdine gives the ball to Maroney off tackle as Rizicki cuts down the brown end. Maroney drives for 13 yards and a first down. Kinderdine, Rizicki, and Cook then start to the left, but the ball is flipped to Maroney on the scissors play back over right guard. This Dartmouth drive was halted by a fumble on the nine yard line. In the final period, quarterback Rohrbach of Brown fills the air with passes and connects on some, such as this one, to right end Witkowski. On the following play, Rohrbach again tosses a pass, but this time Dick Beatty makes a great interception and returns for 30 yards before being brought down. The Indians keep the ball most of the time during the remainder of the game on a steady march downfield. Here Al Rizicki picks up nine yards on a reverse around left end behind the blocking of Funky, Chapman, and Usher. Left half Greg Cook then follows five blockers around right end for another good game. Quarterback Jack Kinderdine keeps the drive going by dropping back and firing a hook pass to left end Mike Nyquist, good for another first down. Kinderdine then switches his sights to right end Dave Usher, and Usher gets to the two yard line before being dropped. The big green is set back on a penalty, but Kinderdine comes back with another pass to Usher, good for the touchdown. On the conversion, Bill King rolls out and throws to Dave Evans, who just makes it in the end zone before being knocked out of bounds. Dartmouth chalks up its third victory of the season and eighth in a row. On the second play of the game, Kinderdine flips the ball to left half Greg Cook and then leads the play and does a fine job of blocking as Cook rambles around end for 18 yards. Two downs later, Kinderdine fakes to fullback Maroney up the middle before slipping the ball to Cook. Greg follows pulling guards Chapman and Gerfin off right tackle for another Dartmouth first down. Dartmouth goes into a pro-type formation with wide split ends and Kinderdine drops back and throws a strike to Carl Funky. Carl catches the ball just as his foot hits the sideline, so the pass is ruled incomplete. A few plays later, Holy Cross throws a long pass to take a 6-0 lead. It takes Dartmouth just six plays to cover 71 yards and even the score. Jack Kinderdine starts the march by throwing to Greg Cook for 33 yards. On the snap from DeHaven, Kinderdine rolls out to the right and throws a long pass to Al Rizicki, good for 30 yards. Touchdown is scored and the game is tied up as Rizicki dives in over left guard. In the closing minutes of the first half, McCarthy, Holy Cross's quarterback, tries to throw long but is rushed hard. The 
pass is intercepted by Greg Cook, who returns 10 yards, and then laterals to Dick Maroney, who goes for another 15. In the third quarter, Jack Kinderdine gets off a truly tremendous punt that travels 68 yards going out of bounds on the one foot line. The Holy Cross quarterback tries to sneak the ball out of dangerous territory, but is met by the entire middle of the Dartmouth line. Bob Skinner, the Crusaders' 205-pound halfback, is then given the ball, but he's met in the end zone by Captain Ken DeHaven and Henry Gerpen, and knocked backward for a safety that puts the Big Green out front 8-6. In the fourth quarter, the Big Green starts another drive as Jack Kinderdine rifles a pass to Carl Funky Good for 16 yards. Here, Riziki takes the pitch out and receives some great blocking from Funky, McElhaney, and Cook as he drives for 12 yards. Riziki is injured on the play and is replaced by sophomore John Crummy. Later, Kinderdine rolls out to the right and throws a long crossfield pass to Crummy, good for a first down on the Holy Cross 17-yard line. The Big Green fails to score when a fourth down pass is missed in the end zone. With but 25 seconds left in the game, it appears that Dartmouth has a victory clinched when John Crummy intercepts a long Holy Cross pass on the nine-yard line and returns all the way to the Dartmouth 40. Pass interference is called on the play, however, giving Holy Cross a first down on the Dartmouth 14-yard line. With but seconds remaining, Jorn of the Crusaders kicks a field goal that just skims over the crossbar, and Dartmouth loses a real heartbreaker, 9-8. to eight. The Indians travel to Cambridge to meet Harvard in what promises to be a very crucial Ivy League contest. Both teams have fine defensive records, and early in the game, it's obvious that there's going to be plenty of hard hitting. Dartmouth is wearing white. On this play, Captain DeHaven shoots through to pile up the interference and Usher, McKinnon, Chapman, Beattie, and McElhaney all get in on the tackle. The Harvard attack is stopped, but on fourth down, Dave Ward kicks a field goal to give the Crimson an early 3-0 lead. Jack Kinderdine takes to the air and receives fine protection as he completes a hook pass to left end Carl Funky. Al Rizicki starts in motion and smashes over left guard behind Maroney's fine block. Rizicki almost breaks away, going 20 yards before he's tackled. Jack Kinderdine then rolls out to the right and fires a pass to Dick Maroney for another Dartmouth first down. It's alert defensive play, however, that leads to Dartmouth's touchdown when fullback Dick Maroney reacts back to intercept a Harvard pass. Kinderdine then calls a pass pattern that finds Al Rizicki all alone deep down the middle, and Kinderdine hits Al for 33 yards. On the next play, Carl Funky takes a Kinderdine pass and fights down to the two-yard line. Jack Kinderdine then rolls out to the right and on an option runner pass play, dives into the corner of the end zone to give the Big Green a 6-3 halftime lead. Up until this game, the Dartmouth defensive record was the fourth best in the nation. In the third quarter, the Indians Gerfin, McKinnon, and Usher stop Harvard's Hobie Armstrong at the line of scrimmage. 
With third down and nine yards to go, Harvard suddenly takes a 9-6 lead as Dartmouth's sophomore halfback is fooled and the Crimson's right end Messenball gets cleared to take a pass from McIntyre. Captain Ken DeHaven smashes through to block Harvard's attempted conversion. Except for one lapse on the touchdown pass, the Big Green continues to play fine defensive football as linebacker Bill Tregeke shoots through to jar the Harvard ball carrier loose from his helmet. A Harvard punt again puts Dartmouth in the hole, but on the first play of the final period, Mazicki breaks loose for 24 yards behind the blocks of Griffin Maroney and McElhaney. Jack Kinderdine's pass to Al Rizicki then carries the Big Green into scoring territory, but the play is called back on a penalty. Kinderdine then rolls out to the left and spots Carl Funky in the clear behind the Harvard secondary. Kinderdine's pass is just too long, and it doesn't seem to be Dartmouth's day. Captain Ken DeHaven comes within an inch of blocking a Harvard punt, but instead of a break for Dartmouth, it turns out the other way as the ball rolls out of bounds on the three-yard line. After Kinderdine first fakes to Maroney, Rizicki takes the ball off tackle and almost breaks away before being caught. Time runs out before the Indians score, and for the second week in a row, Dartmouth loses by the margin of a field goal. It had been four years since Yale had beaten Dartmouth and the Eli were out for revenge. The first score of the year through the big green line comes on a fourth down. Don McKinnon hits the Yale quarterback causing a fumble and the ball rolls across the line and bounces back into the hands of Blanchard for the touchdown. The Dartmouth offense begins to click as left half Dave Evans starting his first game for Dartmouth takes a lateral from Kinderdine and battles his way for 13 yards. Jack Kinnerdine fires a pass to Carl Funky, good for another 13 yards. Kinnerdine next fakes a pass and gives the ball to Rizicki, who goes up the middle on a draw play to the Yale 34. In the third quarter, the Indians play an aggressive brand of defense. Fullback Dick Maroney drives a hard shoulder tackle into Yale's outstanding quarterback, Tom Singleton. The Dartmouth secondary has every receiver well covered and Singleton is tossed for another loss. The Indians start a 68-yard march as Kinderdine throws down the middle complete to Al Rizicki. On the next play, Kinderdine fires the ball out to right end Dave Usher, who then laterals to Rizicki. Frank Pinswade, sophomore left end, enters a varsity game for Dartmouth for the first time and promptly makes a great catch of one of Kinderdine's passes. On the next play, Kinderdine fakes to Fence Wade and then throws a delayed pass to Dave Usher, good for another 15 yards. After that, quarterback Kinderdine again fakes a pass, but this time slips the ball to Al Rizicki on the draw play. On the next play, Kinderdine shifts his sights back to Frank Fincewaite, and Frank makes a diving catch for a first down on the 13-yard line. With third down and a yard to go for a first down, it looks like the Dartmouth drive is sure to result in a score. But as Kinderdine starts to roll out, a Yale linebacker shoots through to drop him for a 10-yard loss. In the fourth quarter, quarterback Jack Kinderdine again keeps the fans on their feet with his accurate passing. This toss to left half Gray Cook is good for 26 yards. Kinderdine then connects to Frank Fincewade for a first down in the Yale 24. Although it isn't until the third quarter of this game that Fincewade first enters a varsity contest, 
He ties an Ivy League record by making seven catches. Dartmouth misses a first down by less than an inch, and then Yale goes on to score another touchdown. On the following kickoff, fullback Jim Lemon takes the ball and runs straight up the middle, almost breaking away. With the Dartmouth substitutes finishing out the game, sophomore quarterback Bill King throws to Pence Wade for a first down on the 27th. But time runs out, and the Bing Green suffers its worst loss in six years. November 5th was house party's weekend in Hanover and was the final home game for 12 Dartmouth seniors. The Lions have a dangerous passing attack headed by quarterback Tom Vassell. The Indian line seldom gives him time to throw. On Vassell's first pass attempt of the game, Ken DeHaven shoots through from his linebacker position to spill the Lion quarterback for a 12-yard loss. Early in the game, Jack Kinderdine fakes a rollout to the right, but then tosses a screen pass back to the left to Al Rizicki. Dartmouth's first score of the game comes as quarterback Bill King fakes first to the fullback and then to the left half before dropping back and firing a pass to left end Mike Nyquist in the end zone. Early in the second quarter, left half Dave Evans starts in motion. Quarterback Kinderdine swings out, then throws to Evans, who races for 19 yards before being shoved out of bounds. When Dartmouth next has the ball, it takes the big green but three plays to cover 70 yards for a touchdown. Kinderdine starts the drive by faking to Evans and then throwing down the middle to fullback Dick Maroney for 19 yards. On the next down, Kinderdine again drops back to pass, but this time hands off to Al Rizicki on the draw play, and Al picks his way through a broken field for 17 yards. Following play, the ball is faked to Maroney and given to Rizicki over left guard through a hole opened by Strickland, Gerfin, and Lash. Rizicki dodges the Columbia safety man and bolts 34 yards to the touchdown. Shortly before the half, Kinderdine takes off around left end after being rushed hard while trying to pass. Watch fullback Dick Maroney coming in from the right-hand corner of the screen to throw a block that eliminates three Columbia men. Kinderdine keeps his feet and fights for 16 yards. On the following play, Frank Fitzwaite makes one of his great leaping catches just before stepping out of bounds. On the final play of the first half, Dave Evans goes around right end for a first down with the aid of some fine blocks by Crummy, McElhaney, and Grudai. Bill Wellstead opens the third quarter for Dartmouth by kicking an onside kick that's recovered by Dave Evans. On third down, Kinderdine hides the ball in his hip, then fires a pass to John Henry, crossing over from his right end spot. The gain is nullified by a clipping penalty, but Kinderdine comes back with another pass. This time, the left end, Carl Funky, good for 14 yards. When Al Rizicki carries the ball, as on this play, he always seems able to twist and fight his way for a few extra yards. Evans starts in motion to the right. The ball is given to Rizicki back over left guard behind the fine trap block by Dick Couturier. Kinderdine then fakes to Rizicki, but hands back to Dave Evans. It was a perfectly executed play as Gervin, DeHaven, Lash, Grudai, Maroney, Henry, and Funky all throw key blocks to spring Evans loose up the middle for 16 yards and a touchdown. Rizicki crashes over left tackle for the conversion, and Dartmouth goes out in front 22 to nothing. Dartmouth's second unit proves to be tough on defense as left guard Chuck Hageman threads his way through the Columbia interference to throw the Lion ball carrier for a loss. In the late stages of the game, the big green line keeps the pressure on the Columbia quarterback. Grudai, Hellick, and McElhaney spill Vassal for a loss. Dave Evans shows great promise in this game as he displays some fine running, such as this 16-yard burst up the middle. 
Vassell's last pass attempt of the game is picked off by sophomore quarterback Bill King, who returns for 42 yards before finally being stopped. With only a minute left in the game, Tom Haggerty takes a pitch out and makes a beautiful 58-yard run for a score. This was Columbia's first touchdown against Dartmouth in 340 minutes of play over a period of five years. The following week, the Dartmouth team flies to Ithaca, New York to meet an always dangerous Cornell team. The first time Dartmouth has the ball, it takes but 10 plays to cover 60 yards. Jack Kinderdine starts the drive going by swinging around left end, then lobbing a short pass to Al Rizicki, good for a first down. Another first down is made as Kinderdine starts to the right on the option play and laterals out to left half Dave Evans. Kinderdine then fakes to two backs, driving into the line and drops back, throws to left end Carl Funky for a 25-yard gain. Dartmouth's first touchdown is made as Dick Maroney makes a great diving catch of Jack Kinderdine's rollout pass. In the second quarter, Kinderdine calls the same pass play that set up the first Dartmouth touchdown and again connects to Carl Funky, this time for 20 yards. Rizicki continues to show why he's the most feared back in the Ivy League as he makes a great catch of one of Kinderdine's passes and runs all the way to the Cornell 14-yard line. Right end, Dave Usher breaks in toward the center, then cuts back out into the clear to take Kinderdine's pass for a touchdown, giving Dartmouth a 12-0 halftime lead. Al Rizicki catches the kickoff to start the third quarter, fakes a reverse to Greg Cook, and then weaves his way up the sideline for 30 yards before being knocked out of bounds. As in every game during the season, the Indian defense plays a strong part in their success. On this play, McKinnon and Gerfin pile up the interference, and DeHaven, Cook, Maroney, and Henry do a fine job of gang tackling the Cornell ball carrier. With only five minutes gone in the third quarter, the Big Green puts the game on ice as Jack Kinderdine rolls out around right end to throw, and then seeing the way clear, he sprints into the end zone for the touchdown. On the conversion, Kinderdine rolls out to the right, but then throws a back to left end Frank Finsweight, who makes an amazing diving catch to give Dartmouth a 20-0 lead. Running from the V formation, Jack Kinderdine starts to the left on the option play and then flips a lateral out to Al Rizicki. Al picks up key blocks from Mike Nyquist and Maroney and races for 32 yards. The Dartmouth defense continues to dominate in the fourth quarter in the first play of the period. Cornell attempts a wide pitch out, but Rizicki comes up to make a hard tackle on the line of scrimmage. On the next play, Henry Gerfin drops back from his linebacker position to intercept a pass. Gerfin returns the interception 23 yards before being overtaken. Dartmouth's second and third teams play the rest of the game, doing an equally fine defensive job. On this play, Vaughn Skinner and Mike Nyquist throw the Cornell quarterback for a five-yard loss. Sophomore quarterback Bill King shows his running ability when he can't find a receiver romping around left end for a first down. The hard-charging Indian line continues to pressure the Cornell quarterback, causing him to throw wild. Middle guard Dick Couturier drops back to intercept this one and returns to the Cornell 22-yard line. The Indian linebackers always seem to pick the right spot to shoot, and Ed Boys and Vaughn Skinner spill this play for a 12-yard loss shortly before the game ends, with Dartmouth notching its sixth straight victory over Cornell. The traditional final game of the season against Princeton is played on a warm, balmy day. 
For the fifth straight year, the outcome of the game will decide either first or second place in the final Ivy League standings. On this play, Al Rizicki wiggles his way through for a few extra yards and a first down. Princeton's famous single wing wedge play is always considered to be good for three or four yards. But Dartmouth's little safety man, Dick Beatty, meets the Tiger fullback in midair to stop the play for a gain of only a foot. Al Rizicki shows why he's just as valuable on defense as he is on offense as he comes up fast to spill Silky Sullivan, the Princeton tailed back for a five yard loss. When Princeton attempts to pass, the amazing Mr. Rizicki again pops up in the right place to intercept the ball and battle his way 42 yards down the sideline. On the first play in the second quarter, Rizicki breaks up the middle for 10 yards on a trap play. With the yardage gained in this game, Rizicki breaks the all-time Dartmouth ground gaining record formerly held by Jake Krauthammel and also sets a new season Ivy League record for yards gained rushing. On the next play, Rizicki leaves the interference. Dave Evans carries around end for six yards after taking a lateral from Kinderdine. Rizicki fakes hard into the line, but the ball is given to Dave Evans, who swings around right end for a first down. This smashing tackle by linebacker Henry Gerfin is one reason why, for the second week in a row, he was chosen the outstanding lineman in the game. On the next play, Hugh Scott's intended pass is high and is intercepted by Dartmouth safety man Dick Beatty, who picks up some good blocks and returns to the Dartmouth 45. On first down, quarterback Jack Kinderdine receives fine protection as a completed pass is thrown to John Henry, good for eight yards. Kinderdine fakes to Dave Evans but keeps the ball and rolls out and throws to John Henry for a 20-yard gain down to the Princeton 24. Rizicki then smashes over left tackle for 11 more yards. On second down, Jack Kinderdine rolls out and throws to fullback Jim Levin, subbing for the injured Dick Maroney. It looked like a touchdown, but the ball is ruled three inches short of the goal line. On the following play, Kinderdine goes into the end zone on a quarterback sneak. But the touchdown doesn't count as the headlinesman calls Dartmouth for lining up offsides. Kinderdine then calls another rollout play and with four blockers ahead of him, could have easily run into the end zone. But Jack is intent upon his receivers and the Big Green loses what appeared to be a sure touchdown. Princeton attempts to move out of dangerous territory with a deep reverse play, but Rizicki comes up to spill the Tiger wing back for a yard loss. A few plays later, the half ends with the game still a scoreless tie. In the fourth quarter, Kinderdine completes three passes in a row to Rizicki. Both teams are frustrated in an attempt to cross the goal line, and late in the fourth quarter, it looks like the game may end in a scoreless tie. Dartmouth's hopes for an upset are shattered, when with only 53 seconds remaining in the game, Hugh Scott completes a pass to McMurray for a Princeton touchdown. In the remaining seconds, Dartmouth makes a valiant attempt to still win the ball game. Rizicki takes a delayed pass from Kinderdine and then runs out of bounds to stop the clock. Here, Rizicki takes a screen pass from Kinderdine and makes a first down in the Princeton 32, but the clock runs out and the Big Green goes down to defeat 7-0. With the football season over, it's back to the books in the library where teammates are likely to get together. Here's Jack Kinderdine, only 5 feet 9 inches and 160 pounds, a senior quarterback from Miamisburg, Ohio, who broke the Dartmouth record with 81 pass completions in one season, good for 985 yards. Kinderdine also set a new Ivy League record with 66 completions in league play. Left halfback Tom King from Shaw High School in West Cleveland, Ohio, 
Played an outstanding game against Penn, but had to miss most of the season due to an ankle injury. John Henry, senior end from Altus, Oklahoma, started most of the games at right end. Dick Beatty, senior from Rye, New York, played almost every minute during the season on defense as a safety man. Gary Spies was another pass defense specialist, a junior from Creve Coeur, Missouri. Jim Lemon is a junior fullback from Cincinnati, Ohio, and has been elected to captain the 1961 Dartmouth College football team. Junior left guard Chuck Hageman from Ecorse, Michigan, did a fine job backing up the line. Captain Kenny DeHaven from Dayton, Ohio, was a candidate for all Ivy League center. Ken will be attending the Dartmouth Medical School next year. Henry Gerpen, senior guard from De Plain, Illinois, excelled all season and was voted by the press as the outstanding lineman in Dartmouth's last two games of the season. Dick Couturier is a junior guard from Central Catholic High School in Toledo, Ohio, who should be seeing much action next year. The team members eat heartily at the Dartmouth football training table. Sophomore right half John Crummy from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, shows great promise for the future. Mike Nyquist, sophomore left end from West Hartford, Connecticut, played consistently fine football all season and should be outstanding in the next two. Getting a big laugh from his teammates' remarks is Carter Strickland, six feet three inches, 218 pounds, a junior tackle from Oneida, New York. Another junior tackle is Andy Ziglis from North Andover, Massachusetts. Dave Evans, a junior from Concord, Massachusetts, took over the starting left half spot in the final games of the season. Sophomore quarterback Bill King from Richmond, Virginia, takes a lot of kidding because of his southern drawl. Another group of players enjoying lunch at the training table include Carl Funky from Upper Montclair, New Jersey, who rose from a substitute as a sophomore to a starter at left end this season. Greg Cook, a slender sophomore left half, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, started several games and should develop into an outstanding back in the next two seasons. Another greatly improved player was Wally Grudai, junior left tackle from Washington, Pennsylvania. Three stalwarts on the big green team enjoy a bull session in the lobby of the dining hall. Dave Usher, junior right end from Cayuga Falls, Ohio, could be one of the top ends in the league next year. Junior center Bill Tregakis proved to be a tough linebacker when he substituted for captain Ken DeHaven. And sophomore Don McKinnon switched from center to tackle at midseason, earned a starting position from that time on. Frank Vince White, sophomore left end from New Rochelle, New York, was nicknamed the vacuum cleaner by his teammates for his great ability to pull in any pass in his area. Steve Lash, junior guard from Calumet High School, Chicago, Illinois, started several games at right guard in late season after Chuck Chapman was injured. George Hellick, a sophomore from Easton, Pennsylvania, was switched from tackle to end early in the season and played an outstanding defensive game against Pennsylvania. Director of Athletics Red Rolfe of Yankee baseball fame gives a few batting tips to a group of Dartmouth's baseball players, including Dick Maroney, senior from Granada Hills, California, who did such an outstanding job at fullback all fall. Connie Purcells from Osceola, Iowa, is also a top high jumper on the track team. Connie was an outstanding end, but injured a knee in the second game and had to sit out the rest of the season. Rugby is a rugged body contact sport that's popular on the Dartmouth campus in the spring. Two of the outstanding players were Jim McElhaney from Denver, Colorado, who started every game at left tackle during the 1960 football season. Also right tackle Mike Mooney, a senior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Talking it over with lacrosse coach Tom Dent is Al Rizicki, senior halfback from Lakeview High School in Chicago, Illinois. Al led the Ivy League in yards gained in rushing and in pass receiving, establishing new league records in both. Another player who started in two sports was Chuck Chapman, starting senior right guard from Darien, Connecticut. Here head coach Bob Blackman, whose Dartmouth teams have never finished out of the upper division in the Ivy League race, talks it over with line coach Jack Music. Earl Hamilton, Dartmouth's head freshman football coach, guided the freshman to an undefeated season. Backfield coach Will Volz did a fine job in 1960 with a group of inexperienced backs, and Elmer Lampy, veteran end coach who has turned out nine all Ivy League ends at Dartmouth, 
is retiring as a full-time member of the coaching staff, but will still be available in the fall to teach the freshman ends. Bill Craver, freshman line coach, is also Dartmouth's varsity wrestling coach. Although this year's football excitement has passed, there's already considerable anticipation and optimism for next season.